So it's taken me about two months to get the rims redone on my 2001 Audi A4 project car. Um, and it was a long process. It's cold. It's so cold out. I actually broke out the heavy winter gear just to come out here and, and show you this and um, finish up this video so I can get it out to you. And in fact, it's so cold. This will probably be the last video uh, till it gets warmer out. Uh, I do have a couple of things from just little trips that I made in the summer that will be coming throughout the winter. Uh, but anyway, the tires are done, they're on the car, and uh, I'd like to give a special shout out to my friends at TNT Body and Frame. You'll find them just west of Pawpaw. Uh, that's Pawpaw, Michigan. They're on Red Arrow Highway. They helped me out. A little bit of supervision, um, a little bit of uh, hands-on, kind of showing me how things work to be able to dismount, remount, and balance the tires. And also my friends at Landfear Tool Works, also known as LTW, uh, for the use of their powder coating equipment and the oven. Uh, greatly appreciate that. And in this video, you will uh, see me actually doing the work on the rims. So let's, uh, let's go into it and let's get you started. So we're going to skip the whole dismounting of the tires, jump right straight into going over to my friends at TNT Body and Frame. They're just outside of Pawpaw, west of Pawpaw, between Pawpaw and Lawrence off M51 on Red Arrow Highway. Great guys to work with. They offered me free use of their equipment to uh, dismount and remount the tires. So a quick rundown of uh, starting out, taking out the valve stems, replacing those, not a big deal. Uh, got a little bit of uh, a coaching from Zach, one of the techs there, showing me how to operate the equipment and jumped right in. Started popping the tires off and getting ready to strip the paint off and uh, get them powder coated. Here's Zach kind of running me down how this thing works. kind of a neat piece of equipment because uh, that bar that you see coming down there doesn't even touch the rim. The only thing that touches it is just that metal bar that I used just briefly there. It's kind of nice, helps keep you from scratching them up the rims, even though I am powder coating them again. You can see just how dirty and gross looking those rims are. Now we're going to skip ahead again. Very cold day here, so I borrowed a heater from a friend. There you can see. Uh, there's my Subaru. You've seen that car in other videos. Very cold in the garage, so I uh, borrowed a heater, get it warmed up. And uh, of course, you know, when you're going to use a paint stripper, the best thing to do is try and break that uh, paint loose, give it a tube, something for that uh, paint stripper to bite into. And so I took a sander to it and started out knocking down the surface of them. I figured anything I could hit with a sander, I may as well try and get the paint off. That'll save me a little bit of time in the future. And I did try a few different types of uh, strippers as well. I had the, the stuff that you get in a quart size can. That stuff runs about $12 a piece. Uh, I had a couple of aerosol cans. Those things are about $9 each. And you'll see here, you know, going through this, none of it was an easy process. You can even see the Audi right there behind me. I got the bumper off the car. Figured, yeah, I may as well uh, sand on the inside as well, take some of that dirt and grime off. Sandpaper is pretty inexpensive compared to the paint stripper, so may as well knock as much of that off as I could. Here, this is now this is the strongest stuff that you can buy at your local auto parts store. It's an aircraft stripper, is what it's called. I don't remember who made it, but you can see I'm putting it down with a paintbrush pretty heavy and you know then you let it sit there for 20-30 minutes and then you scrape it off with a plastic scraper you have to wash it down and uh, that's something I hadn't thought about being in the middle of the winter I don't have an outside hose it was frozen so 
I had to put a plastic bag in the back of my car, run down to the local car wash, and pressure wash everything there, which I guess wasn't a bad thing because that would help take some of the stuff off, but it didn't work out as well as I thought, so I ended up finding a place where I could rent a sandblaster. Yeah, nice, one lane there, and they decided to pass me, almost hitting the curb, honking their horn the whole way. So, enjoying a little music here. Heading off to a place in Plainwell, Michigan, where uh, I could use sandblast cabinets that they have right there. Uh, and it was $18 an hour to use their blast cabinet. So, I figured I may as well go and give it a shot. And uh, it wasn't the easiest place to find because there's no big sign telling me that I'm there. And that's the building that I just drove past. Had to turn around, come back. Again, parking, where do you park? It's just a yard. Uh, lost my but got inside there and a pretty big cabinet. Apparently somebody had broke the glass in the past. Um, it's, it's ballistic glass, I guess they call it. It's got that layer of plastic in the middle, so you're not worried about the shards flying at you. But, uh, I did learn that the best way is to hold it at a bit of an angle. This is kind of nice because it's a foot pedal that uh, activates it so you don't have to try and squeeze the trigger or anything. But if you hold it at an angle and blast across to the paint and you lose your camera, it uh, takes it off a lot better and doesn't embed the material into the rooms. And there they are, all cleaned up, ready to be sandblasted. So now I'm going to be making a trip back out to my friends at Landfear Toolworks. It's uh, ltw1.com. Great guys there. Uh, again, allowing me to use the equipment there. And so we showed up really, really early in the morning before any of the other guys got there so I could uh, do this and not be in their way. Uh, real quick, shooting it with some degreaser here that helps get any oils from your hands off of it. And uh, run it outside. See, it's pretty dark outside. And hose it all back off. And then it will go into the oven baking at 500 degrees for 20 minutes and that helps get any gases out of the metal because I guess brake dust and stuff like that produces a gas and it, and it can embed itself in the metal and you don't want that in there. So here I've got them heated up and I'm running them into the blast booth for uh, powder coating. It's a powder coat booth, there we go. And uh, kind of a cool gun. You just put a ground strap on there and uh, shoot everything with my color coat there. Really, powder coating isn't as difficult as I thought it would be. Uh, you just have to keep it moving so you don't build up, because you can actually make it run. A nice thing too, also preheating them helps the powder coat stick to it, kind of melts it a little bit into your metal. And they were also telling me the best thing to do is not to color coat it and then cure it, put it back in the oven, heat it up, and then come back out and try and do a clear coat. You want to put the two colors, or your your color and your clear coat together while they're in the same spray before you cure it because that kind of allows them to bond together better. Uh, kind of like mixing uh, sugar and creamer together before you put it in your coffee. You know how they get mixed up and, and bond really well together. So here I am cleaning out that gun uh, because they only have the one powder coat gun there. So get that cleaned out, and then I'm going to switch over to my clear coat, which uh, it's. I was so impressed, because I've tried this powder coat without a clear on it, and you can see it kind of goes on white, and as it's hot, you can see the ones that are hotter than the others, it uh, clears right up, but otherwise it looks like that little frosty look on it, but once you run it back into the oven, it, it melts and it clears up and it looks really nice. And so uh, we'll get these finished up and we're going to put them right back into the oven. I'm not the greatest forklift operator so this took me a minute to get it out of the oven and uh, or out of the powder coat booth and then back into the oven here. And uh, pretty big oven right there. I was, and a lot of heat coming out of that still too. And here we are, we are finished. 
So now I'm going to run back in, pull those out, and let them cool down before I head back over to my friends at TNT to remount the tires back onto the rims. And look at that, you can see the shine on them already. So let's go take a look at them. It's still pretty warm. But look at that shine. Don't those look great? I can't, I, at this point I was just so excited I wanted to pull them off and, and do it right then but I had to wait a few hours anyway for TNT to open up and uh, get back in there putting in new valve stems and putting the tires right back on. A little bit of lubricant to help them and it was kind of nice because the outer bead just slid right in there. Uh, the, the rear bead on it. We'll get a pop here and there's that first one put back on the rim. You'll like this view. Check this out. And again, that whole arm, same one that you saw when we took it off, when we took the tires off, doesn't touch the rim. And then it's got this really cool arm that comes in here and pushes against the tire and helps you seat the bead back on. Again, not touching the rim with any piece of metal or anything like that. It took me a little bit to uh, get it straightened out and figure out how to get it working, but once I got it working, see, I gotta, gotta get the hang of that thing. But, uh, you know, Zach showed me how that worked and I was like, oh yeah, a little more pressure on it and there we go. And the tires go right back on the rim. Those look so amazing. I was so happy with that. I realized I could have just picked it up and swung around to get the valve stem where I wanted it, but I had to rotate it. And I also learned that you want to clamp the tire back down from the inside when you put air in it, because if that bead pops out, it could actually shoot the tire up in the air. and. Uh, hurt yourself or somebody else or damage that brand new powder coat I just put on there so you definitely want to lock it back down clean them up a little bit look at the shine on those now we're over at the tire balancing machine and I didn't want to hammer any weights onto the, the edge of the rim I wanted to do the tape weights so I had to change the settings on it a little bit to uh, be able to do that. But you got to get it locked down in there and there's a little collar that goes inside that centers it. You got to measure the width of your rim and the offset of the rim. That's another little thing in here. And uh, change the settings. It was actually, once you learn how it works, it was pretty easy to do. Change my settings so it only puts the, the weight in the center of the rim so I could Put my tape weights on and uh, I was kind of concerned that they were going to fall right back off but once I got them stuck on there they, they didn't want to come off at all so we got them all done and we're putting them back on the car haven't decided yet if I want to paint the car or not but uh, that might be in the future for it as well get them put back on the ground and uh, I got brand new center caps as well as lug nut caps for it um, picked them up real cheap on Amazon. I think it was like $10 for the center caps and maybe 8 for the plastic caps that go over the lug nuts. There it is. There is the finished rim. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.